Hello, welcome back to the She Talks Systems channel. My name is Nicola Melinda and I am your verified ClickUp consultant. On today's video, we are going to be walking you through how to utilize subtasks inside of ClickUp. So I'm going to be walking you through some best practices on how you can utilize them, especially when you are managing larger projects and also looking for different ways to delegate different tasks to your teams when they are working collaboratively within the platform. If you've been working in various different project management tools before, subtasks won't be a new concept to you, but there are some interesting ways where you can use them to maintain productivity and really keep your workflows as streamlined as possible. I'm going to walk you through live demo in the platform to show you exactly how you can utilize the subtasks and some other key features. If you are enjoying the content and you're enjoying the videos, please do hit subscribe so that you're notified of any new videos that do come up on the channel. So there's always this question of when should you start using the subtasks inside of ClickUp and what are the benefits as well? And when it comes to larger projects, I always recommend utilizing the subtasks. When you have a lot of work that needs to be uh, delegated or put into ClickUp, it can easily get out of hand if you are using the parent task for everything. We're inside of my demo space inside of ClickUp and let's just use our website build as a, an example of this. So as you can see, this is a larger scale project that we have. We're designing and building out a website and there are lots of different tasks in this particular list. Now, these are all what we would call parent tasks. Some of these do have subtasks attached to them, um, but overall, these are all parent tasks. Now, what we can do when we have lots of big projects like these, if you have 20 plus projects and they are all laid out like this, it's very easy for the work to get lost or for your team to get confused as they're working through the different tasks that they have to do for each of your various clients. So what we can do here is actually condense your project down, simplify it and streamline this even more. So we're going to clean this project list up a little bit and we're going to do this together. So I'm just going to select a couple of tasks here and just remove them out. So whatever's not needed, we're just going to take those out of the mix. Um, so let's remove that for now. And what we're going to do is actually simplify this. So we're going to create another task and let's just call this um, website build and so this is going to be the first use case of utilizing the subtask so what we're going to do is take these parent tasks let's get rid of this one as well don't need that one and we're going to click on all of these various tasks and select all of them so as you can see, we've got different tasks through concept stage, designing, building, launching the actual um, website as well. So all of these tasks are important in their own right. However, what may happen is you have different people as well coming into the project at different points. So you may have your developer coming in with concepts. You may have your designer then coming in to design the, ass the assets, the developer again coming in to do the actual site build. Perhaps you've got a copywriter as well for writing the copy for the website, and then testing and launching that site as well. So there's a few different stages that you would work through in terms of building out your website. Where I've selected all of these tasks, you can see that they are currently grouped as um, under a custom field, which is the project phase. So they've got custom fields attached to them. But what we're going to do is actually convert these into subtasks. So I'm going to click on to more and there's a little status setting here, which allows us to convert these to subtasks. Now it's going to have me search for the parent task, which is the website build. So this is what I've just created. I'm going to select that as the parent task. What it's now going to do is condense all of those tasks into one. Can you already see the difference? Just by putting all of those subtasks into one main parent task, it's cleaned up my list completely. Now this is a huge benefit. If you have multiple projects, multiple um, tasks that are a part of those projects, what you don't need is 20 different tasks, condense them all down onto one, under one main project task. And this is a huge, huge benefit to using the subtasks. 
Now we can regroup our tasks, we can optimise this list a little bit better, so we don't need to have it grouped under the project phase anymore. We could group it under the status if we wanted to, so we could just do that and that's fine. Or we don't have to have it grouped at all, we can just remove that. Um, and we've also got a SOP in place, so that launch SOP, um, we'll keep it there for the time being. So now for the project phase, what we'll do is we'll remove this custom field because now if I expand this task, this parent task, everything is now housed under the parent task. So we can see that we need to create concepts, review the concepts, the design the assets, and site, build the actual site, hold meetings and launch. What you'll also notice is that some of the elements that are applied to these subtasks, such as milestones and dependencies, they are still applied at the subtask level. So you don't lose any control in the project management process by um, converting a task from a main task into a subtask. You still have the ability to create dependencies, to block dependencies, to create milestones and all of those things. You can also have your various custom fields. So if you do use projects, project stages or phases in your workspace, you can still apply those custom fields into your subtask. Now, something that comes up quite often when it comes to building out projects, especially when you're working with your team and you're trying to manage internal bill billing, is really figuring out the time and tracking time and estimating the time. So what you can see here is that we've got time estimated at 79 hours for this project overall. That's um, because we've got what we call a roll up feature, which is applied. This is a click app feature, which is switched on inside of this workspace. And just by clicking at the top here, go into your click apps. And if we click on time, let's put time in time estimates roll up. This is the feature that will help you to bring your time roll up your time throughout the task. So it will calculate the total time estimate based on the subtasks of a parent task. So again, when it comes to managing or estimating how much time would be needed for one particular project, you can see that we've put our hours in individually. So you will have different contractors, different team members delegated to various parts of your project. You can put in their own individual time, but you'll be able to see the overall inside of this list view. So this is a huge, huge win when it comes to using the subtask inside of ClickUp. You get to split out the delegation. You get to split out your time estimates, your time tracking. You also can open up each of these subtasks and start to utilize them as if they were parent tasks. So what I mean by that is the structure of this subtask is actually the same as the structure of the parent task. So in this regards, we have the title at the top, we can still add priorities. So we can still mark this as a high or urgent priority. We've got our statuses. We can apply our due dates. So if we have a start date here, we can apply our start dates and due dates to the task itself. We can add our assignees and we can also add in our description. So anything to do with the task, anything to do with that subtask, we can apply to the description. Any links, any uh, instructions, comments that need to be applied can all go into the description section. In the same breath on the other side, we've also got the activity field, which is where you can add comments and you can tag in team members. So you can track on the individual status of your subtask by using the activity fields in this section. Just down below, we've got our details section. So this is where our custom fields will be applied, any attachments, and then our action items are the checklist. Now, the difference between your subtask and your action items is that the subtask is still a task. It still needs to be done, whereas your action items are checklist points that need to be ticked off to say that this task is done. So if we're reviewing concepts, there may be checklist items or key process points that need to be taken into consideration to take this task as being completed. So you would add your checklist items here, you would apply those items, and then your team or your project manager can close those down, mark those as completed as you are going through. So that's just the difference between your subtasks and your checklist. But as you can see, everything is pretty much the same in this particular task itself. And if you ever need to go back to the parent task, we click at the top, you've got the website build, that brings us back into the parent task.
So now attached to the parent task, we can see all of the subtasks. We can see how many subtasks are assigned to myself. We can see what the due dates are, priorities. We can also just add in some additional columns as well. So we can say what the start date is, how much time has been tracked. So you can add those elements into this section as well. And you can scroll across and manage the view of the subtask from inside of the parent task. Something else to note about the subtasks is that you can also filter these tasks as well. So even if you're at the list level, space level or the everything level, you can filter out your subtasks. So let's go into the everything level and have a look at how that can work. So we've got 235 tasks inside of this ClickUp workspace. But if I want to see subtasks, I can expand the view for all of these subtasks. There's a little bit much at this high level. Um, we can also separate these tasks out to filter these tasks. Now, the benefit of doing the filtering and separating out the subtasks in this level is that your subtasks are going to have lots of different due dates. So if you're not understanding what the due dates are or you feel like work is getting lost at this everything level, if you have delegated out subtasks and you've applied their own separate due dates, then use this filtering view to separate out your subtasks so that you can see exactly where the due dates are. So in this everything view, I've grouped my tasks based on the due date and we'll separate out our subtasks so we can see we've got some very historical subtasks in this workspace. So I can remove all of these due dates and we can we can always reapply the due dates or reset the due dates throughout the workspace. If we bring it a little bit closer to home, let's go back into our website build project. In this particular list view, at this level, what you may find is useful is that you want to just filter out your subtasks so that it's just an expanded view. So you still have the project task project but it's an expanded view so it's just opening up all of the subtasks that are assigned to this particular project itself and you can save that view down so everyone who comes into this list view will always see that inside of this area but if you are perhaps using different views such as the board view and this is how you are managing your projects as well you're using the kanban board view so in this view we can't see any of the tasks at the moment. What we'll do is we'll go to subtasks and we can separate this. And what it's done is it's pulling in our subtasks. So it's now pulling in those subtasks because they already have this custom field applied. Um, they have the concept, design, build. We can view our projects in this Kanban board view. You can also customize the cards as you are seeing them as well so we can customize our fields here if i add in the status we can see what the status is we can add in our due dates we can add in our assignees as well what we could do as well if you prefer we can change around the view so instead of the project phase what we can do is change this so it is marked as the status so instead of viewing the Kanban board view as project phase, you can also change it around to view it based on status. And so your team members can always just move tasks along the status. Again, you'll be able to still see if this is a concept phase task or a build task, design. So you can play around to the fields group and filter your tasks based on how you need to see them. Now, something that ClickUp has also introduced is that you can apply automation specifically to your subtasks as well. So if we go into our list settings and automations, we can actually set up automations based on whether that's for a subtask or a parent task. So we're inside of the automation screen here. You can see that we can actually base a trigger based on when a task or subtask is created. Um, or when a task or subtask is updated. The subtasks are still actionable items. They're treated with the same respect as if they were a parent task. So please don't ever feel that the subtasks are less than. You still can apply a lot of the same features to these subtasks to make them work for you. So you have various action items that you can see here that all immediate subtasks when they are resolved. So if all of the subtasks are resolved, it can close the project down or it can create another task, maybe a project wrap up task, whatever that looks like in your process. 
You can also differentiate whether this is for tasks or subtasks or just for subtasks. So it could be that when a subtask is created, then an action can occur. So this again also makes it quite easy for you when it comes to building out your workflows. You can decide on the automations that have to apply when it is only for your subtasks. So when a subtask is created, perhaps you want to set a custom field or you might want to apply an assignee, apply a tag or um, estimate some time as well to that particular task. So it's completely down to you. You've got lots of options and use cases there to help you. When it comes to the task and creating automations, um, so if you create a parent task, you can also automate creating a subtask as well. So with a parent task, you can automate creating that subtask. The parent task, that subtask will always be created and applied to the parent task, um, but it means that you can apply what that name is. If you have a template, a task template, then you can choose what template that is and apply it to that particular task, subtask. Apply the status that needs to be added and add in any description items, due dates, assignees, tags, and you can also set the task type. So this might be a milestone, it could be a normal task. So you would apply what that is and set any custom fields that you need to set as well. So with the subtasks, there is so much scope for you to really build them into your workflows to continue the productivity within your workspace. So that's just a quick demo and walkthrough on how the subtasks can really support your process inside of ClickUp, how you can use them to delegate when you've got multiple team members Members working on various parts of a project. Utilising the subtask can really help you to organise that delegation piece, help you to keep a track of the time estimates when you are thinking from a budgeting perspective and looking at the project from a bird's eye view, a higher level perspective as well. There's a lot more that can go into the subtask from a reporting perspective. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that from a database point of view, and I will definitely be happy to put a video together to show you how that can work. If you enjoyed this video, please do click like and hit subscribe as well. So you can always get notified of new videos that come out on the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching today's video and if you have any comments, do feel free to drop those below and I will be happy to respond. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.